Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delmar again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you could subscribe by clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe, because this is gonna really help me in bringing you a lot more content. And today I'm gonna continue the videos on our mental reality. We're gonna be looking at implementing a plane detection script, and this script is gonna allow us to basically not only detect the planes, but also place objects on that plane. So let's go into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let's get started by creating a new scene. So to do that, I'm gonna click on File, New Scene. And in this new scene, we're gonna remove the main camera because we're gonna use that from the AR component itself. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Save to save our scene. And we're gonna be placing that in the same location as our other scenes. This one is gonna be called Plane, plane Detection and Placement because we're gonna be doing both things in this video. Excellent, so now that we have it saved, we can work on the XR component. So I'm gonna right click on the hierarchy, go to XR, and we're gonna need to add an AR session. And that AR session should give us the AR session component and also the AR input manager. Now let's go ahead and do that same thing again and click on AR session origin. So this is the one that is gonna give us the origin and also the camera that we just removed. So this one is gonna be the the camera for the augmented reality experience. So now that we have those two components, we're gonna need another component that I haven't used previous in previous videos. So that one is gonna be called the AR Plane Manager. And when you add that AR Plane Manager, you're gonna need to basically associate a prefab. And that prefab is the one that contains the components to be able to render a plane on the screen. So just keep in mind that we're gonna need to create that in just a few seconds. And also, just to explain to you what the detection mode is, this is whether you want to do a vertical detection or horizontal detection, or if you wanna do everything. So for this video, we're gonna do everything. And But if you want to focus on using one for your own experience, you know where that would be. So now that we have these components set up, what we need to do is create a new game object Let's create an empty game object. This one is gonna be called the AR Plane Visualizer. And, and you're welcome to call these as you know as you wish. There's really not a specific way that you should name things, but it makes sense because we're creating this for a visualizer. Especially if you want to use this for other games, you wanna keep it generic. So now that we have that created, let's go ahead and add a couple of components. We're gonna need an AR Plane. We're also gonna need a AR Plane Mesh Visualizer. You'll see that as we do those, they have a AR icon on them, and that means that they are part of the XR package. We're also gonna need a, a Mesh Collider, a Mesh Filter, and a Mesh Render. Lastly, and the one that is most important is gonna be the Line Renderer. So let's go ahead and add that as well. Go ahead and click on it. Then we're gonna change a couple of things in the in this. So we're not gonna be receiving shadows. This is basically for generating a plane either vertically or horizontally. So we're gonna basically just uncheck the receive shadows. We're gonna leave everything else the same. The one that we need to rename as well, that we need to associate as well, is the material that we're gonna be using for this. So let's go ahead and click on the material. This one is gonna be using the default line gonna leave it like that and then let me look at some of the other settings just to make sure dynamic occlude should be fine we're not gonna be casting shadows like I said so we're gonna set this one to off as well the width is gonna be much smaller than this it's gonna be 0.05 let me see the corner vertices we're gonna set it to 4 and 4 and, and this is from memory that I, I did it previously. So if I miss something, we'll go back through and make sure that we set it correctly. Then we also need to change the color. So let's go ahead and pick the color. It's gonna be black. There we go. And I think that should be, oh, and we're not gonna be using world, world space. So let's uncheck that and then setting this to loop. There we go. So that should give us a nice, a nice line. And I think everything else looks good. Excellent, so now that we have this component added, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into prefabs, drag and drop it into that, so that we can use it for other games. 
in other scenes. So now what we need to do, let, let's go back into the AR session origin. I'm going to remove it from the hierarchy and I'm going to associate it with my plane prefab. So let's go ahead and do that. And that doesn't show. So what we can do is go to prefabs and then AR plane visualizer and then just associate it that way. So that should be everything that we need to do as far as the scene, no coding. So now we need to focus on coding. And what I want to do is I want to create a, a component that is going to allow us to place objects on the scene. So let's go ahead and get that going. So I'm going to go into scripts and we're going to create a new script. So let's go ahead and right click on it, C sharp script. And this one is going to be the placement controller. So let's go ahead and call it placement controller. Excellent. And we're going to be adding that to the AR session origin. There we go. And awesome. So let's go ahead and get, hit a component and then we're going to call it placement placement controller. All right. And now let's go ahead and open it up and then we can focus on just working on the code. So I'm going to click on assets and then open C sharp project. So there's a couple more things that I didn't do by by the basically in Unity that we need to do. So we're going to need to raycast the plane. And to do that, we're going to need to add another component that I that I just figured that we're going to need. But I, I won't do it. I don't want people to you know explicitly have to go through the hierarchy and add it manually. So instead, we're going to have the script do that for us. So let me just go ahead and close the example reference. We're just going to be coding it from scratch so that you know what we're doing. Excellent. And let's go ahead and just click on the placement controller and we're going to be focusing on this. So one of the components that I want to require when you add this component to your hierarchy, it's going to be the AR Raycast. So let's go ahead and add that. So it's going to be required component. And then we're going to do type off. This is going to be Raycast. going to be AR Raycast Manager. And you'll notice that it's, it's not included in the, basically in the namespaces. So we'll need to add the namespace. So I'm just going to hit using. And then what this is going to do is every time we try to add the script to a game object, it's going to add a AR Raycast Manager automatically for us. So the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a prefab to basically a game object to instantiate when we place it on the planes. So let's go ahead and add a new, a new, a new serialized field. This one is going to be private game object, and we can call this game object, game object to create, or we can just call it keep it game object. Let's go ahead and keep do game object to create. I think that that makes more sense. Otherwise, it's going to collide with a game object that is part of this of the mono behavior. So I think that works, and I think that's everything that we need there. So then the other thing that I that I want to do is create a new property so that we can access this from anywhere. This one is going to be called game object place prefab. And let's go ahead and create a, it's basically a property so we can get it back out. This one is going to be the game object to create. And we're going to set it as well. So game object to create. And then it's going to be the value that we pass in. There we go. Normally for properties, you want to do capital letters. So I'm just going to rename these to be place prefab and this one is going to be also the place prefab but it's going to be let's go ahead and rename this let's go ahead and keep it consistent so this is going to be my private variable and this is going to be the one that i'm ex exposing from from outside and let me just align this awesome so the other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need to basically keep track of the objects that are that we're spanning and, and you're, you can do that if you want to. And, and the reason for that is if you wanted to only create one instance, you can check to see, okay, if it's null, then create it otherwise. So 
thinking about it, I want to place many objects on the on the scene, so I don't want to keep track of them. So let's not do that for now. Let me just re restructure everything here. So we're also going to need to get an instance of the AR Raycast Manager. So we can either do it in the star or we can do it in the awake method. So I'm going to do it in the awake. And let's go ahead and this is trying to be faster. So let's, there we go. So, but we don't have an instance where we're storing that. So we'll need to do that. So let's do a private AR Raycast Manager. Ray, AR Raycast Manager. And I like to name private variables with lowercase. So let's do that. There we go. We double click here to copy it. And then we're going to need to get that component. AR Raycast Manager. There we go. So now we should have the instance of the Raycast Manager accessible to us in this class. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to keep, we're going to have to keep track of when somebody touches the screen. So when they touch the screen, what I'm going to do is we're going to be basically using a Raycast to see if we're colliding with the plane that we created. So we're going to need a new method to do that. We're going to say this is going to be of type bool and this is going to be a try get touch position. And we're going to get the out value of the touch position. So we're going to say vector2 touch position. Excellent. So we're going to need to get the input touch event from here. So we're going to need to do if input that touch count is greater than zero. This means that we are capturing touches and somebody's touching the screen. Then we're going to need to do touch position equal. So we're going to get the touch, touch position based on where they touch and position. There we go. So if they're touching the screen and we're getting the position, we're going to basically return true. And the cool thing with the out with the out is that we're not only getting a true value, we're also getting the touch position that the user basically generated by touching the screen. So that's everything that we need to do here. And we don't need to, I think this is complaining because we do need, re need to return a false. And yep, we need to return a false when we're not touching. So we'll just do that. And I think that should be good. And this is also complaining because we need to set a default value on the touch position. So we'll just say default. There we go. And I think we should be, you have to do that every time you're basically outputting a variable. So I think that should be good. So now what we need to do is focus on the raycast. So I'm going to remove the star. We don't need that. Now what we need to do is we're going to check to see if we, if we're not touching, which I'm going to say by calling our meta, and we need to get the the out variable touch position. So if we're not touching, we're gonna return. That's basically what we're gonna say. What we're gonna say here. That should give us the touch position. So if we do touch position, we should have access to that. So what we need to do is we need to evaluate the raycast. So we have the raycast available to us. So we're gonna say AR raycast manager. And then you're going to do Raycast. But before we do this, we're going to need to track where the hits are happening. So let's go ahead and create a new variable here. It's going to be a static. And we're going to create a new list of Raycast hits. We can just say hits equal new list of Raycast hits. So that's going to be one of the parameters that we're, that we're going to need in the Raycast. So let me add the parameters and we're going to need another variable as well. And in that one, it's going to be, so here we're going to need the touch position. We're also going to need the hits and we're also going to need to tell it what type of tracking we're doing. So if you do a trackable, trackable types, and that is an enum. So let me go ahead and trackable. 
there we go and it's going to be so we're going to tell it what we want to track so we're going to do a plane within a polygon excellent so that should give us so this should give us whether or not we are we have hit a collider by doing a ray cast so then the next thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to store the current hit, hit position, the hit pose. Then we're going to we're going to evaluate the hits and we're just going to get the first pose of the hit. And as soon as we get that, I want to basically not only create a new game object but also position the new game object. So we're going to need to do that on the in this method. So we're going to do an instantiate. And then if you remember from right above it, we declare a place prefab that we're going to be using. So we're going to be instantiating this. Then we're also going to be positioning this at the hit position or the hit pose in this case. And we also need to set the rotation. So I'm going to say hit pose that rotation. There we go. So this is going to basically keeps, keep creating new instances of this prefab at the position, which is going to be the position of the where we're hitting the ray cast. And it's going to happen to be the plane visualization that we're using. All right. So I think this is everything that we're going to need to do to get this going. So let me go back and make sure that everything is assigned. And the only thing that we need to do that I believe that we haven't done is create the raycast. So looks like we haven't. So let's go ahead and remove the component and re-add the placement controller. And you'll see by doing that, it adds the AR raycast manager automatically because we told this class that that was one of the requirements. We're also going to need to determine what the place prefab is going to be. So let me do that. And for that, we're going to need a new object. So I'm going to create a new object here. We can just create a, a sphere and it's going to be a uh, 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, because if no, it's not going to, it's going to be way too big. I'm also going to create a new material and I want to create a material that is, that is very, is metal like. So I'm going to create a material. This one is going to be place material. We can just call it place. I think it's fine. Then let's associate that material with our game object. And we should have that associated, which we do. We can say this is the place object. Okay, and there we go. And then let's just go ahead and drag it and drop it into prefabs. And one more thing that I want to do to this is also uh, give it more of a metal look. So I'm just going to go all the way high here. Let me see. And then let's just adjust the just the colors a little bit. I want to give it a more metallic look. Oh, there we go. Something like that. And maybe the color can be just playing around with these colors. Maybe like a reddish type color. It should work. Let's see. It's going to be hard to see it if I don't go a little lighter. There we go. And and down here, I think a pack is fine. I think that something like that works. Okay, I think something like that works. That looks good. All right, so now that we have that, I think we're good with the placement object. And let me go ahead and click on overrides. Okay, so we don't have any changes on this prefab, so we can delete it. And we can now associate it with the place prefab that is on the placement controller. So I'm going to do that with by dragging and dropping. And that should be everything that we need before we can test this scene. So let's go ahead and get this scene built. I'm going to go into build settings. I'm going to uncheck the previous one that I built. Click on add open scenes. And then now we can do a build. And I'm going to go ahead and drop it into here. And this one is going to be placement. And I'm just going to hit save. And that's going to save and create a new build for us. So I'll just continue on in a few seconds as soon as this 
project is being built and we have a new build to test in our iPhone or iPad devices. All right guys, so it looks like it finished building. So now I'm gonna go ahead and push it to my iPhone. So I'm just gonna hit play, let it build and push over and I'll show you how it looks on my device. Okay, so it looks like it's installing now and copying the binaries. And it should be done in just a few more seconds. And let me just move it around until we get we start detecting a plane. You can kind of see that it's now doing detections. We go up and there we go. So let's see if it's working. It looks like it's working. So I'm basically just drawing the spheres around. I can also go ahead and draw it on the walls because it did detect the wall. It's also detecting the walls on the side and so I'm gonna call it good guys thank you all right guys thank you very much for watching this video I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers either game developers that are starting out game developers that are advanced they have resources for you and also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code thank you very much guys